but it's a participation together in the gospel. And that is what Paul is referring to here in verse 5, in view of your participation in the gospel. I want to tell you there is no greater business in the world than the business of the gospel. And I do not mean that in crass, worldly sense. I mean that metaphorically as we do business for God in this world, as we share the gospel of of Jesus Christ. And notice it's in the gospel. I think it's also fair to say, because this word participation is translated elsewhere, fellowship, there is no fellowship that anyone has outside the gospel. You may have a relationship with someone, but if they're not a believer, there's no true fellowship. All fellowship is in the gospel. Do you see that in verse 5? In view of your participation in the gospel, that means in view of your fellowship with me and with one another in the gospel. You have to be a believer in the gospel to be connected at the deepest level with other believers, to be connected at any level with other believers. That's why only two believers should marry, because you can never have fellowship except a man and a woman both believe in Jesus Christ. And every once in a while, I still hear someone say to me, when I was married, the pastor never shared with me that we both had to be believers. For whatever little effect or influence I could have at this moment, I just want everyone in this house to hear me say, you should only marry another Christian. And that's not an elitist statement, that's just God's wisdom and God's design. And if you marry someone who is an unbeliever, you will never have fellowship with that person. You're going to be stuck at the friendship level at best, and that's going to run thin at some point. It's only in the Lord. And so for those of you here today who are college students, those of you here today who are single, those of you who are, who are teenagers, hear your pastor say, you must marry only in the Lord for that other person to be a believer in Jesus Christ. That's at the heart of what Paul is saying here. It's been well said, if you marry an unbeliever, that unbeliever, you have God as your father, That unbeliever has the devil as their father. John 8, 44, you have your father the devil, and the lust of him you shall do. You then will have the devil for a father-in-law. 